You guys, I'm feeling so nostalgic sharing all of these throwback cookbook recipes. Today is Food Hack Friday. Hey guys, Kira here from 50 Shades of Mom, tips for all shades of mom life. And in today's video, I am back to share with you guys a food hack. So it has been a wicked long time since I've shared a recipe out of this book, but I used to share recipes out of this book all of the time. And you guys, this is some of the videos that I thoroughly enjoy. I love sharing recipes with you guys, especially ones out of my cookbooks and even more so a bigger bonus when you find the cookbook at the Dollar Tree. So I found this cookbook at the Dollar Tree along with another one, the dessert and booze hacks. And I used to share both of those on my channel quite frequently, but it's been quite some time and I really wanted to start getting back into it. So what better time than now to share some pizza food hacks. So there was quite a few pizza hacks in this book and I figured I would couple them all into one video, especially right now because it is Lent. So if you celebrate Lent, there's no meat eating on Friday so I thought some pizza hacks would be cool to share right now and anyways some people just love pizza in general so pizza Friday it was so I went through marked all the pizza hacks and I'm going to put them together in this video to share with you guys today so let me take you down to the counter and we'll get into hacking some pizza Okay, so first up is pizza hot dogs, which seems pretty simple all in itself, right? And it just says here, turning a hot dog into a pizza requires very little effort, and it looks a lot better than slicing up hot dogs and sticking them on a pizza. Don't do that, it's creepy. So I thought that was kind of silly, and then it gives you the instructions here, which we're gonna go over in a minute on how to make this a pizza hot dog, but I love how it says shredded mutz there. That's right, true Italian shredded mozzarella right there. And then here's the ingredients that we're going to need, and like I said, obviously, fairly simple. So I just have four pre-cooked hot dogs here already. And then I have some mozzarella that isn't shredded up yet. And then I have some hot dog rolls. And then back there, I just have some mushrooms because one of the hot dogs is for Mason and he likes mushrooms on his pizza. And then here is my homemade meat sauce that I defrosted from the freezer for this. And then here is some pepperoni because everybody else likes pepperoni. And then we're gonna brush some olive oil onto the hot dog Roll. So that's it for my ingredients, but you obviously can add anything that you would like on top. And then I just put a little bit of wax paper on top of my ugly looking pan right here. And then I laid out four hot dog buns. And then now we're just gonna brush on a little bit of olive oil. I probably should have put olive oil in a bowl and then just dunked the brush inside of the bowl instead of doing it this way. The bread is absorbent, so I kind of absorbed it right where I put it. But I know for next time, if I wanna do this again, just to dip the brush in and then brush all of your hot dog buns until they are completely covered. And then once that's complete, we're gonna get into covering each one of our hot dog buns with sauce. And then just like you would any other pizza, then we're going to add the mozzarella and then your toppings. Once your assembly is complete, you're going to stick it in a 375 degree oven for five to seven minutes or until the cheese and toppings are bubbly and toasty. Once they come out and they're all bubbly like a pizza should be, then we're simply going to add our warm hot dogs right on top. Poof, you guys, a pizza hot dog. So on this particular night is the night that Daryl and I had those ribeye steaks that I picked up in my grocery haul that I was dying to have. And we served that alongside of French fries. So the kids had their pizza hot dogs and some French fries on the side. And surprisingly, everybody said it was amazing. For this Italian, it was a little hard to swallow seeing a hot dog on some pizza, but you know what? Don't knock it till you try it, right? Right, so now we are going to head on to our next 
food hack and that is reheating pizza in a skillet. So it says, open your mind, my stubborn pizza reheaters. While you might insist that the toaster oven method gives you the best crispy crust, I beg to differ. In order to really get that slightly charred crust while simultaneously heating the top of the slices, you gotta go with a skillet. So I was pretty interested in seeing how this was gonna work. So we had two slices left of the DiGiorno pizza. This was a separate night that we had this pizza. Daryl wasn't home and so I decided when he got home from work, I would bring up his two slices in the pan and give it a shot. So we got a pan nice and hot and I placed in the two pieces of pizza. Now, it tells you to cover it with a lid and that's right for all of you who've been with me for a while, say it with me. I do not have a lid right now because it is still packed somewhere in the boxes I have not unpacked. So I actually chose one of the iron pans we used to use in the restaurant for melting cheese and I set the timer for four minutes. So now while that is cooking for four minutes, I wanna read this to you guys because this is more of just a hack and nothing to show you, but I thought it was pretty smart. So this says the delivery pizza trick. When ordering pizza for delivery, politely ask them to not cut the pizza. This is especially important if you've added an on any veggie toppings like mushrooms, peppers, or onions. What is the asinine make-believe science, you must be wondering? Well, when they cut the pie at the pizza establishment, the moisture and grease from the toppings seep into the crust, making it all soggy. So invest in one of those fancy rotary pizza cutters and slice it up yourself next time. It makes a difference, I promise. And that actually seemed pretty smart to me, you guys, thinking about all the moisture that comes out of the vegetables and stuff would definitely seep in the oils and it would make your pizza more soggy so I actually really liked that hack and although that iron pan took a little bit longer than the four minutes that they said it still did its job it got the cheese all melty there was a nice char at the bottom that made it like a wood fire or wood burns kind of pizza Daryl said it was really good. He liked the crisp and crunch to it. So who knew that that would work? I don't know if that's necessarily easier, but it's good to know that that is an option. So our last hack is leftover pizza crust nachos. And so my husband was a little disappointed, but he was not allowed to eat the crust in his pizza. And I took it to make this. So this says last night's leftover pizza crusts are totally fair game. There's no reason to throw them out when you can make them something possibly better than pizza itself. And so here are the instructions that it tells you on how to make these pizza crust nachos, but it is fairly simple. It is basically just making a pizza again, but using the pizza crust as your quote unquote chips. So I really liked that hack as well. I just thought that was interesting. If you are the kind of people who don't eat your pizza crust, that really is a great way to utilize that. So here I have some shredded mozzarella. I have some more of that pizza sauce. I have his crust all chunked up in a bowl right there. And then I have some Italian. Italian seasoning and then there is that melting pan again we actually have that from when Daryl and I used to work at Ruby Tuesdays 15 16 years ago and we used to use that to put it up in the sky they called it when you made cheese fries because that iron pan was really good for melting cheese and stuff like that being able to retain the heat so I thought that would have worked to help us melt our cheese before and I thought that would also be good for making our nachos so I just placed our little pieces of crust onto that little iron pan and then I covered it with sauce and then we're going to cover it with cheese and a little bit of that Italian seasoning and then away it's going to go into the oven. So here's what these quote unquote pizza nachos looked like all melted up. I mean, you can see that the cheese is bubbling and yummy. And I have to say that my kids absolutely love this. I mean, yes, it was pizza, but they just liked the pull apart factor. They were just coming over and grabbing a little piece of crust and running away with it. And they just thought it was so good. And it was my sauce and just melty cheese. And how can you go wrong with pizza? But I have to say, as always, 
anyways, they came up with another ingenious way to use something I never would have thought of. So yay to food hacks. Okay, you guys, so that was it for our latest food hack. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and comment down below and let me know if you guys would like me to keep sharing hacks out of this book or if you're interested in seeing the hacks out of the dessert and booze book. That book is actually perfect coming up into some of our warmer and summer months. They have some great cocktail recipes in there as well as some really neat like dessert and fun things for the kids like ice pops and that kind of stuff like there really is awesome things in here and this book is even divided into categories so there's breakfast hacks and meal hacks and side hacks and snack hacks so we have done a fair share of each one of those but there's still so many more to divulge I think there was 75 total and this might only be like a nine or ten so there's still so much to share with you guys inside of this book so make sure you let me know if you guys would like me to keep on sharing them and I will definitely do so I love you guys all so much and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.